Hey everyone, so I want to give you an example of how to compare a couple of models uh, using different algorithms when one of them is a classification model and the other one's a regression model. So this uh, isn't terribly common, but it is common enough that it's worth understanding the concept here. So we're using the bike buyer's data. If you're watching this, hopefully you've been taking the course, or you've been following along with all of these courses. And we have this unique situation here where our dependent variable variable can be uh, both numeric or categorical. In this case, we're trying to predict whether or not someone would purchase a bike. And we have a version here that's text where it's a yes or a no, and another version here where it's coded as a number. So if again, if you've been following along, you know that we can use regression models like linear regression to predict numeric outcomes, but we use classification models like logistic regression to predict categorical outcomes. Now there's a trade-off between these. But that trade offs easier to understand with something with a few more values. So let's just hypothetically for a moment, let's assume that we're actually going to predict level of education. Now in this data set, if you're familiar with it, education, which I've also gotten two forms, a numeric version and a categorical version, um, we have five values, partial high school, high school, partial college, bachelor's and graduate. Clearly, there's an order involved in those. Uh, full high school is more than partial high school. So with this education numeric version, we simply made a rank order where one equals partial high school, two equals full high school. Here, these fours mean bachelor's and five is graduate. Now, the advantage of that is it lets us capture that, that, uh, that data about how one version of education is better or higher or more than another. Now, if we were to use just this version of education, the text-based one, the algorithms don't know that the word graduate means more than bachelor's, so it treats it, as you remember, with dummy codes, where bachelor's and graduate and all the values are treated as equal but separate category, uh, categories with binary codes. So the advantage there, uh, sorry, let's, let's start with this one. The advantage to this one is that it captures the rank order. The disadvantage, as you may remember, is that by rank ordering them, it assumes that the value between, or the difference between partial high school and high school of one to two is the same as the distance between partial, uh, high school and partial college, two to three. And that may be false. And if that's uh, if that assumption is bad, then it could be that using this version of bachelor's is actually better or more accurate or easier to predict accurately, is a better way to put it, than this version. So if we're going to predict a model with a, a categorical variable and compare that to a model with a numeric variable, we can't do that easily because we get different evaluation metrics. So here we left off uh, in the in this chapter where we were predicting uh, classification models, and I've got my two class boosted decision trees up here. As you might remember, the evaluation results we get from a classification model are things like accuracy, area under the curve, and precision recall. Uh, this is a good measure. This is we like this one a lot because it's a simple mathematically it makes sense. Accuracy is simply the number of times that we had a true positive where we predicted a value and that value is accurate divided by all of our predictions, whether it's a false negative or a false positive. Oh, sorry. It's both the true positives and true negatives, uh, the sum of those two divided by all of them together. So what we uh, the problem, though, is if this is a regression model, uh, then we're going to get a score like RMSE, coefficient of determination, or R squared. How do we compare that to this version where we're treating per, where we're evaluating purchase bike as text rather than purchase bike numeric? That's what I want to show you uh, quickly in this video. So here's how we're going to do it. With the classification model, there's nothing more required than simply remembering what our accuracy score is. 68%. 68.3. So I'm just going to come back here to Excel. And let's zoom in a bit. The video make this easier. And what I would do first, uh, before you get to this step at all, is I would try every single version of a classification model using purchase bike, and then every version of a regression model using purchase bike numeric. So let's assume we've already done that, and that we found that the best version of a classification model is using this two-class boosted uh, decision, two-class, which one do I have? Oh, this one right here, two-class boosted decision tree. I can't remember if that's the highest one or not, but let's assume that it was, and that's our best accuracy score. So I'm going to come back here to Excel and write down that my model and algorithm, and I'm going to put 
R squared and accuracy. So the model is our dependent variable for predicting purchase bike. Um, and you might also put some other notes like all features or all independent variables or something like that. I'm going to, yeah, I think my model does have all of them. My algorithm is boosted, sorry, no, to class boosted decision trees. Or is it decision jungle? I can never remember. Decision tree. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Tree, just like that. I don't have an R squared, NA, but my accuracy was 68.3%. So I'm going to assume you've gone through and you've tried every different algorithm and you can, you'll change the algorithm score and you've recorded all of your accuracies and that this is our top one. So now let's go back here and let's assume that we've also tried every single regression model and that maybe when it came to regression, uh, Bayesian linear regression was actually our best model here. So let me switch out really quick. Uh, if I'm going to use a regression model, I need to change train model from purchase bike to, oh, hold on, I don't have it selected. I need to come back here to select columns and say take out purchase bike, give me purchase bike numeric, check. Now on my train model, I can change this from purchase bike. Now, the reason why I'm getting all of them here is because I need to rerun select columns before it shows me just those that are available. But I know that Purchase Bike Numeric will be available, so I'll check the box and we're good. Uh, everything else should be fine, so let's run that model. I'll pause the video. Okay, and that's all done. So, as you'll remember, what we get here, and Bayesian linear regression is a bit different, it, it puts the, for whatever reason, it lists their scores out uh, horizontally instead of ver vertically. But what I get here is an R squared and I don't have an accuracy score. So the question that we're trying to answer with this video is how do I compare, come on, paste. Uh, I don't like that, let's change that to, let's undo 10.55%. And I'm still on a purchase bike. I'm still using all features, but this is purchase bike numeric, all features, let's extend that. And I'm using the Bayesian linear regression. Okay, so how do I know which one of these is better? These are two totally different types of evaluation metrics. Here's what I want you to do. So back here in Azure ML Studio, go to score model, right click, visualize the predictions. And remember, I've only got 300 rows here, but that's okay. 300 is a big enough number that I think this will be accurate enough. What I want you to do is let's copy all of this data out of here, which is a faster way. Oh, that was fast enough. All right. Cop Command C or Control C. Let's go to Excel and let's um, let's do this in a new sheet. Paste and zoom in a bit. Okay, my score label. I don't need my score. My standard deviation. I'm going to delete that. Um, okay, perfect. Oh, no, that is scored label standard deviation. Undo, whoops. What I need is, oh, let me go back and take a quick look here and make sure I know which one's which. Scored label mean, that's what I want, and scored label standard deviation. This is, uh, the reason why I get mean and standard deviation is because we're working with the Bayesian model, which is a probability-based model. Um, essentially, what we want here is the scored label. So I'm going to, sorry, the score label mean. I'm going to delete this column, and I'm just going to call this one scored. Oh, I see these are off. That's why I'm getting off in trouble here. Those need to go over. Okay, place that. Score label mean. Okay, so here's our prediction. Let's uh, get rid of these rows right here. Uh, what I want to have here is accuracy in this column. And like you've seen me probably do in prior videos, what I'm going to do here is say this cell is going to equal, let's round the scored label to the nearest, with zero decimal places, the nearest integer, basically. So let's format this to look the same. Copy that down. So here's my prediction rounded to a zero or one. So I've got it now in a format that's similar to my purchase bike numeric. 
So what I want to do next is change this to be a 1 if my prediction is accurate and a 0 if it's not. So the actual purchase bike value is 0. We predicted a 0, therefore this one should be a 1. So what I'm going to do is change this formula to say if, put in parentheses, that rounded number equals the value here in purchase bike, put a 1, otherwise put a 0. So there's my formula, which now if I copy this down, double click, there we go. Now this is a 1 because my scored label rounds to a 0, it was a 0. Rounds to a 0, it was a 0. Rounds to a 1, it was a 1. So you can see my first five were accurate. This is the first one that's inaccurate. This rounds to a zero, but it was actually a one. So essentially, I'm generating the same accuracy score that we got with our uh, classification model. So let me delete these last few records. I don't need those. There we go. And let's also, it makes it easy to put all this in one of these nice Excel tables. Okay. So now, let's change that text. Whoops. I didn't mean to do that. Um, there we go, change that text to white and bold, 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 please. That's bold, okay. Anyway, I'm going to come here and go to table, add a totals row, come down here. This is a count right now. Let's change this to an average. There we go. Now this gives me the average of that column, and because it's in a 0, 1, um, I can format it as a percent, a couple of decimal places. So this is an accuracy score that's now comparable to the accuracy score we got from the classification model. Hopefully that makes sense. That's all the classification model accuracy score means. They're simply asked, did they predict the word yes or no? And was it the word yes or no? How many times did they get it accurate? So our prediction uh, with the Bayesian linear regression is a 66%. So I'm going to come over here to my sheet one and say this is actually 66.00% accuracy. So now I can compare my regression model with purchase bike numeric to my classification model with purchase bike. And I can see that, you know what, actually it's better to treat this as a yes, no, and ignore that uh, one number is higher than the other. Ignore that and just treat them as equally weighted independent categories. I can be more accurate. And that's how I decide that my final model is actually going to be not this regression, but I'm going to go back to my two class boosted decision tree and change my columns, go to purchase bike numeric, add back in purchase bike, check, make sure I change my train model to back to purchase bike. Okay, so now I've confirmed, I've tried every relevant classification model and every relevant regression model and I've determined that the best way to predict whether or not someone will purchase a bike is with a classification model using two class boosted decision trees. Hope that all made sense. Come and talk to me in class if you need any more help.